so a notary as well. And we wanted to just come on tonight to give you guys some great information in regards to the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program Forgiveness Loan that's currently being offered by the government. Um, our main mission is to help other notaries in the community um, get the funds if they are eligible to apply. Um, just because we've noticed that a lot of small business owners like ourselves typically have not been able to take advantage of the program or gain access to those funds um, easily. And that's something that we wanted to remedy the best way that we could. Um, so what Renee and I have done is partnered with a lender by the name of A10 Capital. So they are a smaller company and that's to the benefit of us all just because they have been able to shorten the turnaround time for getting access to the funds. Um, we've seen a decrease anywhere from four to six weeks to with them when you apply, it's typically only about seven days um, from a initial application to getting the funds deposited into your account. Um, what I'm going to do first is just go over the basic requirements of if you're eligible for the program. So, the main thing that they are requiring is that you were in business prior to February the 15th of 2020. So pre-pandemic, if you were already operating and earning funds for your business, then in that case, you are eligible for the first round of the PPP. Now that can be shown in a couple different ways. If you were collecting funds via through your bank account, checks, um, if you were processing payments with the merchant services. So they kind of give you many different options to be able to show proof that you were um, in business before February 15th. The next thing that they will require is that you did make a minimum in gross revenue of $5,000 in order to be eligible to apply for the um, program. If you can show that, then you can apply. That will need to be shown either on your 2019 tax return or your 2020 tax return. It can be either or. The next thing they will require is that you have a bank statement um, for February 2020 or before that bank statement will need to match what's on your Schedule C for your tax return. So let's say for example, if you are a sole proprietor, you don't have an LLC, but you are operating a business. And when you filed your taxes, we'll just use my name for example. If on my taxes, I just put Leslie Dawson and that's what it shows on my Schedule C, then my bank statement should also show Leslie Dawson. They need to match up. But if on my Schedule C, I put notary advanced services, then my bank statement will also need to show notary advanced services. Everything has to match because they are being very strict now, whereas they were not doing that last year. Um, just because of the fact that they did have a lot of fraud, so what we are trying to do is make sure whenever you put your application in the first time that it's done right, it's seamless, so that there are no hiccups and that it's not flagged. Um, so again, so once you have your bank statement for February 2020 or before, you will need your tax returns at this time. I do know that previously, if any of you had applied, it was not a requirement last year to have those tax returns. But because now um, the deadline is passed for 2019 taxes to be filed, they are um, requiring that you do have your tax returns. Let's see, looks like Renee has put up the PowerPoint. Um, so if you need a visual, um, you can definitely go off of that. I loosely follow that PowerPoint. And you can move it forward, Renee, if you would like. Okay. All right, so um, after you have your tax returns, your February 2020 bank statement or before, and you make $5,000 um, for the year or more, then at that point you do become eligible. The next document that they will need is a current bank statement for 2021. 
that is that one is very important because that is the bank's account that they will deposit your funds into. So on that statement, your business name does need to match um, what is on your Schedule C as well, just like the first one. However, if for any reason the account you had in February 2020 was closed and now you have a new account, that's perfectly fine. As long as the names match up, um, you can move forward through the process with that. Um, I will tell you in some cases, just depending on your application, um, they may send you additional documents requests, which could be something like your 4506T. They may need a your tax transcript. And we're just seeing that typically if people, if you have like employees that work for you, because then the amount that you're eligible to apply for can increase um, whenever you, whenever you apply, that amount can increase more than what the minimum is. So they may require additional documentation. What we are currently looking at here is just some of the benefits of this um, program. So whenever you get the funds, of course, everybody wants to know, it says loan, how is it forgivable? Well, for sole proprietors and single member LLCs, it's quite easy. Whenever the funds are deposited into your account, the IRS automatic, well, the SBA automatically assumes that you're going to use those funds for paying yourself anyway. Um, so there is really pretty much going to be guaranteed that it is forgiven. Um, they do give you up to 24 weeks to use those funds. So if you don't, if you want to save them, you can basically have it deposited into your bank account and you can write a check to yourself. So that can be a weekly check or a monthly check. Um, and since they do give you 24 weeks, that's up to six months almost that you have to use those funds and then apply for the forgiveness. And it doesn't require any credit and there are no fees um, associated with it as well. So that is definitely a benefit. So it's almost like free money for your business. Um, another great thing about it is if you don't need all the funds to pay yourself, they only require 60% of it be used for that. They remain in 40% if you need it, can be used to pay things like your mortgage, your rent, any operational costs for your business. For example, us notaries, that can be printers, ink, paper, your gas, um, anything along those lines would count as operational expenses. And those can be used. So it can be used for that. And you can apply forgiveness as long as you use it for those things. Right, and here's just another breakdown of how you can use the fund so that it is 100% forgiven. Whenever it comes time to apply for forgiveness, um, if you've heard people applying for it last year, you will know that process was a little bit strenuous. What they did after December of 2020 is they made that process more streamlined for people who were getting under $150,000 so that it'll be easier. So it's just a um, five minute application, one sheet that you would fill out that would come from your lender whenever you apply for it. Now, being that you are the only person for your business, if you don't have employees, they do cap the amount you can get. So the minimum you can make is 5,000. The most is 100,000. So what that means is if you made 120,000 or more or something over 100,000, you, you still can definitely apply. It just means they cap the amount of the loan you can get. So they'll make it whenever they decide the amount that you qualify for, they'll say, okay, you made 100,000. They won't say you made anything over that. And basically at 100,000, you qualify for $20,833 um, as a loan for your business. All right, and this is just showing how they calculate that amount. So the way they came up with the $20,833 is they just divided the 100,000 by 12 
and then they multiplied it by 2.5. So they try to give you like two and a half months worth of payroll expenses is what they're doing. Now, if you are in the food industry, um, it will be 3.5. And I do want to um, let you know while we're on the call, if you have more than one business where it's a separate LLC and a separate EIN, or if one of your businesses is an LLC with the EIN and the other you do under your social, you can file um, for both. All right, and this is just going over how you apply. Um, so what we have done is created a site specifically um, for notaries and your family members um, that you have that may be eligible. You would just go to notaryppp.com and you would fill out the application. And what we are asking people to do once you fill out the application on notaryppp.com is to send us an email at, you would send it to info at notaryppp.com. And I'll have Renee type that in the chat. It's gonna be info at notaryppp.com. If you send us an email with all the documents that we mentioned today, then we can assure that your application is pushed through um, within the next 24 hours. That way there's no hiccups um, and we know for sure that your documents have been submitted. Um, the relationship we have with A10 Capital, we have direct access to the owner. So he is helping us ensure that we get everybody's applications in on time, just because there is only enough funds for a couple more weeks. So they are running out and there's no guarantee if they're going to, um, if Congress is gonna approve more funds to go into this program as of yet. So, because they did extend it until May 31st, but there's just not enough funds to last that long. Okay, and this is just a visual of the documents that you will need. Um, so I do wanna highlight right here where it says payroll tax forms for 2019. Um, you'll see where it says forms 941, 940, and W3. That's typically for people if you have W2 employees. If you don't, then your tax return um, is perfectly fine. Okay, and we kind of went over this already, how you are eligible for the forgiveness. Okay, and we can go to the next slide, Renee. Okay, so um, what I was gonna say in regards to that last slide, so uh, you can see um, in the middle where it says if you, so for example, if you do have employees, I don't wanna exclude anybody. So if you have employees, um, when they if they calculate that as part of your loan amount then you are going to want to keep them on because if you reduce your workforce or their hours then you will be responsible for um 25 percent so they won't forgive 25 percent of it but again that's only if you have employees and you don't keep them on Okay, so I do want to mention something in regards to taxes. Um, when it comes to taxes in the PPP loan, it is a loan, so it's not considered in, in income. Um, so it won't increase your tax liability. But another major benefit that they did change in December is that whenever you're filing your taxes and you're writing off your deductions, previous to December, you wouldn't be able to write off the expenses that you use the loan funds for but now you can. So it's almost like double dipping. So you can use this free money for it, 
but you can still write it off and get your tax benefits for those same expenses. Um, a common question we do get is, can you apply with more than one lender? The simple answer to that is yes. Um, I wouldn't recommend it at this point um, unless you have not. And the only way I would recommend that is if you have applied with a lender and you've been waiting for weeks and you haven't signed any documents. If you haven't signed any documents with that lender, then it's okay to go ahead and apply with a second lender. And it's going to be whichever one sends you the documents first that you sign, that's who you will end up going with. And you'll need to withdraw the application from the previous lender. Um, because what happens is once you sign documents, you will be provided what's called a PLP number from the SBA. And they will only issue one of those for you. Um, so if you've signed documents somewhere, then you'll want to stick with that lender, lender for that particular application. Okay, this is more about the EIDL loan. I won't get into that today because I, I definitely don't want to confuse anybody um, between these two programs because they are separate. We can kind of skip that too, Renee. We went over the um, employees. Okay, so if you're a sole proprietor um, and you need to show your owner draws, again, that can simply be done by either an electronic transfer from your business account um, to your personal account or by writing yourself a check. And if you're wanting to get more information on the um, PPP loan, you can go to sba.gov. All these links are on their website so that you can um, just read up on it if you need additional information. But we are also available as a resource to be able to answer any questions that you may have. And I will go ahead and open it up for questions at this time. So, okay, anybody who wants to jump in, just go ahead and unmute or just type in uh, live and we'll unmute you and you can ask your question. I know there was a question in regards to, will this, would the PowerPoint be shared? Or Will it be on replay? Uh, to my understanding, it will be on replay. Did you guys get that? No, if you can repeat that, please. So there was a question in the chat. Does any, does Incorporation of the LLC timing make a difference, Ms. Dawson? Um, that is a great question, and yes, it does. Um, so, for example, if you have an LLC and you were not incorporated until June 2020, right? That LLC would not be eligible to apply because it's considered that it was not active before February 15, 2020. Now, with that being said, if you were operating your business um, before you incorporated, then you can apply, but you would just apply as a um, sole proprietor because at that point in time, you were running your business not as an LLC. Um, but that would need to be reflected on your tax return where you were filing that portion of your income as a sole proprietor. I hope that helps. It does, thank you. All right, you're welcome. 
And then the next question was, is the PowerPoint going to be shared or the slides, or is this going to be on replay? Okay, and I believe um, it was stated that it's going to be on replay. Yes, it's going to be available for replay. Okay, great. Okay, so for those of you, if you're continuing to see the screen, you'll be able to see Notary PPP. Can you guys see the screen? Yeah, I can see it. Okay, I can see it. Okay, perfect. So this is pretty much what the page looked like. And if you scroll down, it tells you everything about what we discussed, okay? This has been extended, like Ms. Dawson has said, until May 31st. It's a video of your fellow notaries. Also, it's the steps to what to have when you apply and the frequently asked questions. If you have any questions, you can please call us or you can chat with us. Also, we have weekly Zoom calls where you can stay in touch with us. You register for our Zoom if you just need another refresher. They're always on Mondays at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time and 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. You'll click this for, to register if you just need walkthrough. We do, a, we do a walkthrough and we are prepared to have people apply at the exact time. So we walk through exactly what the application looks like um, at that moment. Um, to get started, yes, the link is above. We copied and pasted it here. Okay. And then also you would just press apply and it will take you to our partner landing page. The most important thing below is to make sure that California Notary Agency is the drop down your listed originator, okay? Once you say apply now, right? You will start an application, right? You would go down here to drop down to first loan, okay? At that point, you'll type in your name, Jane, and then you put Joe. And then you just put your email address. I will put one, two, three, five, four, three, two, two, five, five, or two, two, three, three. Your password. And then once again, two for the, it to create a login page for you. You press continue. Okay, count exists already like this. All right, info at ppp.com. And you press continue. At that point, you come to the portal of where your dashboard is. You're a list, this is just the first interact. I'm not gonna do the whole application, but you just put your name if you're a sole proprietor um, depending on what Ms. Dawson said, how you filed your Schedule C. If your Schedule C is listed as ABC Company, you file your application ABC Company. If your Schedule C is filed your name, you put your name. And then you just continue to walk yourself, continue to walk yourself through the application. So those of you that are not familiar with the Schedule C, right? I just wanted to show you what a Schedule C looks like. Can you see my screen? Um, can you enter it's yes in the chat if you can see my screen? Yep. Okay, excellent. So a Schedule see C is a addendum that rolls up to your 1040. And those of you who don't know what a 1040 is, it's just your tax return, okay? So a Schedule C is for 1099, gig workers, notary, um, self-employed. Uh, sole proprietorship and single member LLC. At this point, this is very, very critical. If you put your name on this section right here, that means that you're putting your individual name. Unless you're filing under your business name, you will use section C. This is very critical how you apply to our application or any application. 
is what you put on the first line or section C, okay? That's what you're going to put as the legal business entity, and that matters. So what Congress has allowed since this new wave of the PPP is on your line seven is what you're going to do the calculation, which is your gross, okay? Your gross right here is how they determine that calculation that Ms. Dawson said where if that was considered $50,000. So if I put $50,000 into the calculator, $50,000 divided by 12 times 2.5, that person will be eligible for about $10,416.67, right? So that is determined based on which is filed on your Schedule C, line seven. They no longer accept, they no longer go off of the net, which is line 31 after your deduction. So if you go back to the application, once again, it's very critical at that point. Lastly, a lot of hidden things on the application is the zip code. It asks for a four digit zip code, additional after the five. Well, is this little tool right here at the bottom that pretty much state how to find your zip code? If you click there, you put in your address, it will find the zip code for you. And you just enter everything. And then there it will give you your four digit additional to your five digit zip code. These are the steps that are very critical. As you see, once you get to through the first page, the second page, immediately after the third page, will come across your calculation of how they calculated. Um, the amount that you reported. With this step right here, if you're going through your social, it's very critical to understand the format to put your social in when it says taxpayer ID. If you're filing under a business, you know to put your EIN number. So it's very, very much so very critical that your social format is not this way, but since your social is your sole proprietor business, you're going to put it in this format. Okay, so those are just some of the tips that we wanted to share when you're going through the application. Okay, um, if you have any more questions, please put it in the chat or we can un unmute you as Ms. Dawson is very much so experienced in the process. Okay, but definitely on this site, it tells you how to forgive. Right, so if you click here, you can see what the current SBA forms are looking like for the forgiveness and what type of questions they have. So if you go to the PPP loan, it says if you made 150,000 or less, you'll use the 3508Z. If you made 150K more, you will use the 4508F. So if you're under that, the form will look exactly like this for the forgiveness part. It's a one page paper. It's similar to a Schedule C. How did you use the funds, right? And that's what you would turn in. Remember, you have to use the funds within 12 weeks. That's a total of four months. So once those funds are deposited, you will have to use them in that time frame. Okay, well, that's my part of this process. And we'll be open for the next couple minutes to answer any or if no more questions then we will conclude this podcast uh, i do have a question excellent how quickly can you apply for if you got the first draw how quickly i don't know if you guys answered this already it came on kind of late but how quickly can you get the second ppp if you already got the first draw Dawson, within that cover period Okay, if you got the first draw, um, are do you have any employees or are you just a sole owner of your business? Uh, single member LLC. Single member, you can go ahead and reapply immediately. Immediately, okay. Yes. Um, and about the cover period, uh, I know you, I think you said it was, what was it, four weeks? Was it, I missed that part. Um, I think you just mentioned it. As far as how long do you have to, to spend the funds? Was it four weeks, six weeks? Um, it's 24 weeks. It's 24 weeks. So you got up to 24 weeks to 
to um, essentially pay yourself the funds. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And I'm sorry, one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, can you apply for multiple businesses? Yes, you can. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. You're very welcome. Tech trying to cash in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't blame him. I've done it for three businesses. So I love it. Hey, I wanted, I wanted to thank you guys also for um, doing this four week special with the Notary War Room. I know you guys are bringing a lot of value to this because it's not being spoke about uh, enough, especially you know in the notary platform, the notary space. So I wanted to salute you guys and thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Renee, for putting this together. Um, the slides, giving us the walkthrough, let us, letting us know about um, your platform and how you're able to help notaries with that. So we, we have a few more minutes, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, if you wanna go live, just unmute yourself. Or if you wanna type in your question, type in your questions. We are live here with, I like to call it, Dawson and Detman. Sounds like a law firm. You know, I, I also did have a um, question. So the first thing that you would uh, suggest, like, let's just say somebody on YouTube is watching the replay of this video. What is the very first step that you recommend that they do? Do you recommend that they go ahead and download the Schedule C and start filling that out first? Or do you suggest that they go to your website and put in the application? Like what, what is the first step that you recommend they do? The very first step I recommend they do is reviewing the documents they need and having all those um, in a PDF file or some form on their computer, because that's the most, um, that's the biggest issue everybody is having okay. is their documents. They don't have them either where they can upload them or they don't have them all in one place. Please just have all those documents together. It'll make your process a lot smoother and a lot faster. Perfect. Yes, and on the screen, and once you go to Notary PPP, if you can just look here, it's going to show you exactly once again the documents that you need. Perfect. So it does. Uh, I do. I do have one more question. Okay. Cool. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you don't, if you don't get the loan for forgiven, how how long do you have to pay the loan back? Is it that twenty four weeks, or is it like the the auto loan? Uh, like 24 months. To make sure I understand correct, are you saying if you don't use the funds? No, if you, if you, if let's say they decline your forgiveness, uh, how, how, when do you have to pay that loan back, the PPP? Um, the repayment time for this loan is 24 yeah. months. 24 months. Yes. However, and do you have to start paying that immediately once you get the the PPP? No, because um, like even once you're 24 weeks in, they most likely will have not even sent you the forgiveness process yet. Um, they do. It's about 12 months before you have to start paying right now. Um, yeah, but yeah. I will say anything can change because they are changing things as the process goes. But as of right now, it's about 12 months. So you want to put that in quickly as possible? Is, is that what you're saying as far as the forgiveness? Um, as soon as your lender sends it to you, because um, okay, got it. For example, like I applied in the, in, I guess April or May for my first one. The lender did not send um, the forgiveness until January. The application, and they still, even though they've sent it, they're not accepting applications right now because they're still trying to get people processed this round. So they're not even taking forgiveness applications. At least my lender is not. Now, some lenders are, so people have already been forgiven. So that's completely dependent upon what the lender decides. Thank you, that answered my question, thank you. You're welcome.
Cool. So if there isn't any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, this wraps up today's segment. The next segment is next Thursday, the 15th at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. What are we going to be discussing, ladies? I believe that we have how, well, we kind of went over how to apply and be eligible, right? It's how to apply and be eligible for the second round of for the funding. second round of funding for the PPP. Love it, love it. Okay, so that does it for this segment. Um, peace, love, happiness, and cash flow to all you guys. I hope you guys got tremendous value today, and we'll talk to you next Thursday. You heard. <laughs>